So essentially we've all seen graphics like this and this on Pinterest, but exactly how do you get that look for your own clothing brand? You've always wanted to have that vintage sort of aesthetic, but you simply can't get there. In today's video, I'm going to show you exactly how to make your t-shirts feel a little bit more authentic in terms of the graphic feel. So let's get straight into it. So first we have two designs here, one on a black background and one on a white background. Essentially, we're going to be making these designs complete graphics. Now you can see I've already been playing with this here. So let's go ahead and remove all the masks. Before I even add textures and stuff to my designs, I like to give them the vintage treatment. That's what I call it myself. Um, and essentially it's just a bunch of um, adjustments and layers that take away from the color slash look of a regular image. You have to kind of separate realism to a sort of drawn effect. Firstly, I like to introduce a curve. Now the curve that I introduce is mainly just to bring in a bit more of the, I guess, mid tones, but not too much. And also just get rid of a little bit of the highlights. So bring up the mid tones and drop down the highlights. So you have a bit more shadows that you can work with in the design. Once I add that, I like to add in a posterize. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but a posterize basically just separates the colors into their individual sections rather than let them blend like a real image. So when you posterize, posterize the image, um, you're essentially just deselecting the actual colors in the image in itself. And you can see here, if I put it all the way to, I guess, two colors, it tries to like merge all the graphics into one. Um, I like to keep mine in between 11 to 19. 19 is a bit too high. So I would say seven to 11 is the perfect am amount for this. And it works the best. So after that, add in a gradient map. Gradient map is mainly just to add color in. So if I wanted to have a more warm texture or warm tone, I'll add in those warm tones. So you can see here, in the mid tones, a lot of warm going on. And that's essentially just separating the colors. For instance, you can't really print skin color. So you can print a cream or green or black or orange, but skin color doesn't exist. So you have to give the computer a more accurate representation of a color that it can print, if that makes sense. So that's why I add in these cream tones. So once we've got our gradient maps complete, the last thing to add is a hue slash, hue slash saturation. Essentially, you're just stripping all the color out, give the graphic its washed look, and that's about it. After here you have this done, your graphic is basically ready to be treated. Now, what would that look like for a more drawn graphic? It's essentially just the same thing, but in a different order. I usually start with the hue to get rid of the colors, um, so let's go ahead and drop this color like down by 22. I'll go ahead and add in a, oh, sorry, I already added the hue. I added two hues by accident. Let's delete that hue. So we already have a hue here and this dropped down to 41 actually. Um, and then I add in a curve and the curve is just to bring up the actual dark points rather than bring them back in, which is kind of crazy. Like you want the colors to be faded, especially when it's a graphic because it tailors more to that uh, vintage fill tea that's been washed in, if that makes sense. The first thing you're gonna wanna do is make a mask. This comes in handy later. Next, you're gonna wanna find your actual grunge graphic. Now, Texture Labs has the best. Like, there's nothing that compares for the price. It's free. They have the best textures. It's called Texture Labs for a reason. Now, once you have it here, you just wanna drag in your actual texture we have three textures here. This one's gonna be for this graphic. A little bit less in terms of actual, like massive distress. And for this one, let's go ahead and grab this texture. And let's go like this. And let's go ahead and scale the texture straight away. And you can hold shift and warp the actual texture to match your aspect ratio of your design. If you want all the scratches and everything on there from here essentially you want to add in a threshold so once you've added in the threshold you want to play with the um, level so left is extremely light right is very dark so let's find a happy medium which is 
I like this where you got the heavy distressing down here and it's more light at the top. Next, you want to add in a mask. Like I said before, make sure to add in a mask onto your design folders. Once they're all grouped together, add it into a folder or convert it to a smart object. So once you're to this stage, make sure you select your actual graphic. Once it's in a folder or convert it to a smart object, go and select color range. And then from here, you want to select your shadows. Let's go ahead and press shadows. Now you can play with the fuzziness to add more or less into the actual graphic. I like to keep the fuzziness like around 50, 52%, because once you start going all the way to the fuzzy end, you start to add in midtones, which you don't really want. Press OK. And simply all you have to do is press G or go down and grab the paint bucket fill tool. Make sure it's selected onto black and fill that in. So once you've had that filled in, you can go ahead and turn off the layers. And you can see that the grunge aesthetic is added onto the graphic. And if we put it on black, that's about it. That's essentially how you add a grunge effect or torn effect onto your graphic. Let's go ahead and apply that to the Stone Cold Steve Austin one. Now these sort of like um, wood bark grain textures work really well with these sort of graphics because it's more traditional in the terms of like acrylic cr drying up or like the paint of the actual screen print drying up. So it will dry up like this rather than in blotches like this. This is more so like if you drove over the t-shirt, which is unrealistic. So this gives it the more realistic traditional vibe. Make sure you don't select the mask, <laughs> select the actual thing, select color range, shadows, 51% range is all black, all black. Make sure that's in. I actually might add in some fuzziness and fill that in with black. Turn this all off. And you can see here that we have our grunge graphic applied, I guess. Now, for me personally, I don't like my shadows being printed on my graphics. So we're going to go ahead and remove these shadows and these midtones in this graphic. You're going to want to basically turn off or disable this layer mask to make this more effective so you don't put this mask into the mask of removing the blacks of the graphic, if that makes sense. Same process, select color range, shadows, 24%. Yeah, there we go. Now we have that color in there, so that's fine, perfect. We're gonna lose the eyes, um, and that's about it. Everything else we can keep, and just basically fill this in with black. So once that's done, the image gets a little bit more moody it drops down to all the black because essentially this is going to represent the color of the t-shirt and that's going to dictate how your shadows look like on your graphic let's go ahead and turn on that layer mask back on and just for reference to show you guys what that would look like let's go ahead and press other on the R boards and let's change the color to like i guess a dark brown you see how that doesn't look very good because the shadows are dictated by the garment rather than the graphic in itself. So yeah, I see a lot of people doing this sort of graphic t-shirt where it's vintage, but they're still printing the shadows and it looks a bit, I guess, unfinished, unclean. So once you've removed the shadows, it basically elevates your design a bit more, makes it stand out a bit more and makes it look way more effective in terms of that true vintage feel. Personal cutouts, yeah. Now, if you have some crazy layers that are very large, I like to essentially cut out my layers twice. Realistically, it would print like this. Bam, so essentially that's how you get the vintage look. And if you print properly with screen print or DTG, your garment won't be too far off this. Obviously the colors are gonna be muted once you go into screen print, or they might come out very bright because they're gonna have to compensate for these two browns, they're probably gonna mix these browns together or add in some red, because that's what they usually do at these screen print shops to, I guess, make up losses in color. Um, and they usually do only six to eight colors in screen print, unless you get a really good manufacturer where they will do like 12 colors, and that's super expensive. Anybody who runs a print shop can, can tell you that. The more colors, the more expensive your design is gonna be. Let's go ahead and add that to the white t-shirt, the graphics, so you guys can see an example. Let's go ahead and size that down. Bam. 
let's drag that together so essentially you guys that's how you add textures slash the vintage feel or the vintage treatment towards your graphic hopefully that helped you guys um yeah say a huge thank you for getting me to thirty thousand subs which is absolutely crazy considering i just graduated university this is such a plus for me so i appreciate you guys truly and thank you for rocking with me